Have you found yourself doing this while playing games recently, or is it just me? Lately, I've had a hard time focusing during dialogue in games, and I've been struggling to figure out why. Has video game dialogue gotten wordier, or have our attention spans weakened over the past few years? Now, to be fair, this is a sub-story quest in Like a Dragon Asian, where the player specifically has to listen to another person gab about their day and recall the details afterwards. It's pretty funny, but if we're being honest, Ryoma's reaction here isn't unlike how I feel playing video games at times. This bit in Like a Dragon Asian has got me thinking about video games within the context of introversion and extroversion. It feels like some works are a little more outgoing than others and draw their energy from these interactions. Others are quieter, more contemplative works that let the environment do most of the talking. In 2014, I was gifted the book Quiet, The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking, written by Susan Cain. The next day, I snuck away from a family party to go read it in my room. In 2017, the CEO of the company that I worked for asked me to come into his office, where he asked, Hey, Richie, have you ever read this book? As an attempt to bond over our shared introversion. Quiet is where I learned about the concept of introversion, and it provided me with a framework on how people like me can own their quietness and view it as a strength. In Quiet, Susan Cain argues that there's what's called an extrovert ideal in society. Generally, when people think of someone who is charismatic or has leadership qualities, they imagine someone who has the loudest voice in the room. Someone who thrives being the center of attention and always has the perfect, witty thing to say for every situation. The key takeaway that's summarized in the very title of this book is, in a landscape where people are encouraged to be extroverts, is there not a strength in choosing your words carefully? If a person speaks infrequently, won't people pay more attention when that person decides to speak up? And is it actually detrimental to verbalize your ideas in as many words as possible? I feel like this discourse secretly reared its head up during Goji discussions of 2022. There were a plethora of wonderful games that dropped last year, but most people fell into two camps. Elden Ring was my favorite game that I played this year, or God of War Ragnarok was my favorite game that I played this year. I had seen these two games as two sides of the same coin. They're both third-person action RPGs set in Norse-ish environments developed by some of the most capable teams that games have to offer. The difference being, one of them draws its energy from the quiet moments, and the other draws its energy through dialogue. The common reason why God of War Ragnarok didn't click with some people, and full disclosure, didn't click with me, is because of its insistence on chatting it up. The best thing that I can say about Ragnarok is that it's movie-like. The voice actors did an incredible job, and the camera work is really effective. But there are times when a quiet moment to ruminate presents itself, only to be interrupted by small talk, or a character stating the obvious. I see Elden Ring as the exact opposite side of this coin. Elden Ring revels in its quiet moments and will almost never tell you anything directly. It's 100% comfortable leaving the bulk of its story open for interpretation, sometimes to its detriment if it means providing the player room to play detective in its environment. They don't care if you understood the story completely, as long as you felt the tone of its world. Horrifying people are going to whisper cryptic poems in your ears for 50 hours. It accomplishes tone setting much better than it establishes a narrative. FromSoft's Hidetaka Miyazaki has long cited the works of Fumito Ueda as a source of inspiration for his games. In an interview with Fumitsu, he said he first played Aiko at a friend's house and described it as a beautiful, untold experience and story that I'd never imagined. I was quietly moved and silent. I'm not exaggerating when I say it was the game that changed my life. Ueda has similarly had me under some kind of spell ever since I played The Last Guardian in 2016. After rolling credits, face still wet after straight up ugly crying from a video game for the first time, I couldn't stop thinking about how emotionally effective that game was, despite being able to fit the script on a handful of post-it notes. I would later understand that Fumito Ueda coined a term for his creative philosophy, designed by subtraction, which, no joke, I've probably thought about at least once a week for about seven years now. Ueda's design by subtraction encourages the removal of any element that doesn't serve the core experience of the game. It's an offshoot of minimalism that requires the artist to constantly look at their work and think, would this be more effective if I cut X or Y? 
It's a kind of Marie Kondo-like process that might ask, does this piece of user interface spark joy? Before thanking it and dragging it into the trash bin. This is almost exactly what happened for Ueda's first release, Ico, which is designed by Subtraction 101, the video game. I had the pleasure of experiencing Ico for the first time last year and was astonished by how many of these ideas it perfected and practically invented back in 2001. That's a video game right there. Ico's follow-up, Shadow of the Colossus, didn't exercise quite as much radical creative restraint, but instead was more of an evolution in Ueda's Design by Subtraction. We could call it Design by Subtraction 201, the video game. In Shadow of the Colossus, the main character has to slay 16 colossi in order to revive a young woman who's fallen lifeless. In between the enormous boss fights, you traverse empty fields, alone, on horseback. There's no music, no dialogue, and no smaller enemies to fight. To me, these moments are equally as essential to the soul of this game as taking down the Colossi are. I think of these lonely, uneventful moments as white space. If stabbing five-story tall monsters in the head are paintings in a museum, the horse riding in between these boss fights is the white, empty wall that allows the paintings to shine brighter. As alluded to earlier, design by subtraction can not only be applied to creative elements, but also functional elements, like user interface. In Shadow of the Colossus, the UI elements are hidden until they are necessary, like when you change your weapon or need to see how much stamina you have left. This is something that FromSoft would later emulate in Elden Ring, opting for a near-empty UI as you traverse the world. There's less clutter on the screen to be distracted by, and allows the player the space to focus on what they're observing in the world. When I have my UX design hat on, I tend to refer to this as avoiding a Mr. Krabs interior design situation, where the user can be overwhelmed by the number of options that they have, and in turn, pay attention to none of them. There's also strong research to suggest that our attention spans just aren't what they used to be. In 2023, it feels like social media companies and advertisers are fighting for their lives to distract us from doing the things that we want to do. Even while researching the dwindling attention span for this video, I found myself legitimately unable to focus on the articles because of the amount of ads, related content, and general screen clutter on these websites. It's almost as if they don't want you to focus on their content. At times, this is exactly how I feel when playing a game with excessive UI elements on the screen. It starts to look like Mr. Krabs' house. This is why lately, introverted video games tend to work better for me. Games that understand that there's power in being short with your words. The last asterisk that I'll throw at the end of this conversation is that I'm not suggesting that all game narratives need to be concise, minimalist experiences. While the book Quiet is a celebration of introversion, it also maintains that extroverts have just as many positive traits as introverts do. A planet full of extroverts would be pretty overwhelming, and in the same breath, a planet full of introverts would be pretty boring. In fact, there are many maximalist video games that I do really enjoy, the same way that there are many extroverts in my life who I love. Dragon Quest will work for me, Yakuza will work for me, and Dragon Quest themed Yakuza games will extremely work for me. Ultimately, there's a ton of factors that go into why we enjoy the things that we enjoy, but generally, a quiet, understated game will always find an easier way into my heart. So what do you think? Do you prefer introverted games over extroverted games? Am I missing some important context here? Feel free to let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, appreciate it.